Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. And of course, we have another fabulous show today. So Sarah has so many cute projects for you, but let's just say grilling, which is not my forte. <laughs> Thankfully, Wynn does that. Uh, I would probably burn the house down. So, uh, but I can do what Sarah is doing and she's gonna give us some tips for some really cool embroidery, embroidery on aprons. I'm looking at the apron she's wearing right now. You're gonna love it. So I see you all rolling in. We are live on Brother Facebook and YouTube channels. We can see all your comments and we're really live. So I'll bring your comments up just to say hi and grab some tea. I will go see if Sarah's ready and we will be right back. Good morning, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Angela. I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm doing fabulous. Look at your cute apron. <laughs> it is cute, right? Oh, it's very cute. You got to show this off. I love this. Yeah, so I embroidered it with my initials. I created a little design on PE Design 11 with the grilling tools, added a little frame, added Grill Master, which is Probably not an accurate title, but it looks good on the <laughs> apron. <laughs> and then, um, I added a couple other things. So it has a tie at the neck. It has a tie at the waist, super adjustable. So it's really a one size fits all type of piece. And then I have my little phone pocket right here. Turning the wrong way. <laughs> oh, nice. And this right here is really good for your grilling tongs. You can just kind of clip them on there. So. Versatile and cute. And that's very cute. I would have to have, I would definitely have to have the phone. I might need a container for a fire extinguisher, but other than that, do you have a pocket that big? Because that's what I would need. <laughs> I don't have a pocket that big, no problem. You might be down a bit, but definitely a good tool to have when you're grilling. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I yeah. see the whole brother sewing and crafting family rolling in. Hello, hello, it's nice to see you. So, Sarah, I love your backdrop. Thank you. <laughs> What machine are you going to be using today? Yeah, today we are on the PR680W. So all the projects I'm going to show you, um, except for one towel, all the other ones were sewn uh, by me and then embroidered on my six needle machine here. So I'm just going to start with a little show and tell. Um, Angela, I'm totally in the same boat as you. I'm not the griller in my family, but I can sew all of the accessories for the master griller. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna show you guys everything that I made. Um, and then I wanna know what your favorite pieces are. And then I could go into more detail about how I digitize the embroidery right on my screen here. That sounds great. Cool. All right, so you see the apron and everything matched, right? So I want this, this pretty, it's kind of like a robin's egg blue because I felt like it was brighter, good for summer. Um, also a unisex color. I think this would look great on men and women. So that's what I went with. So the first item is a custom placemat. So I put my name on there. Uh, I put a little place in the center for the hot plate of food. Little place right here for your cold drink. And then my favorite print is mayo. So I made a little circle here where I would put Kind of my mayo bottle but uh, this could be personalized with your favorite drink your favorite condiment maybe it's ketchup mustard uh, all that good stuff so there's that that's really cute do you have is there batting in that by the way or what's inside of there, that? yeah there's a little cotton batting in there uh two layers of fabric sewn together and the top layer i embroidered before sewing the two pieces together. Very cute. Very cute. All right. So the next one is a little quilted hot pad. So when you have a huge tray of food coming off the grill, you have a nice place to put it down on the table without wrecking your nice outdoor furniture. <laughs> So again, this is two pieces of cotton, a little batting in between. I quilted it. Um, I actually embroidered it first. 
pants. You can see that's the same design that's on my apron, just a little bit smaller. And, and then I just kind of quilted around it. I added a little grow grain ribbon on the side. And you got a hot pad. Very cute, Sarah. I see a lot of people asking. So Arnell, I think, um, was your last one all cotton too? Both of those had cotton on both sides? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, yep. that's what I thought. I didn't, didn't want to answer though, unless I was for sure. Everyone's <laughs> saying, I love your apron. And thanks, Cindy. And the rest that are saying you love my shirt. I actually just dyed my shirt. So now I can, it would go great with your apron. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your shirt looks great. All right, so then I embroidered again, same design, matchy matchy on a really nice tea towel. So you can kind of wipe your hands, wipe your sweat when you're by the hot grill. <laughs> That's another little fun one there. So cute. And then the last one, save my favorite for last, is the tool wrap. So I have a little hook right here you can kind of hook it on the side of your grill again i have my initials and that little design going on there and then you open it up it unrolls and again i'm not a griller so i don't have all the tools but i put as many tools in there as i could and what I did was I embroidered the name of the tool right on the pocket there. So you can keep everything you need to grill nice and organized. So you got your bottle opener, your thermometer, your spatulas, tongs, all that good stuff. So it goes right in there. Again, this is just two pieces of cotton and rolls right back up, ties up. And then you could just hang it on your grill for safekeeping. Oh, Sarah, that's so cute. Now, I don't want to go off topic for a second, but not only for grilling, if you're going on a picnic or anything like that, that would be perfect to roll up everything that you want in your, to have with your picnic basket or your you know lunch or on the boat or anything like that. What a great idea. Yeah, exactly. It's very versatile. Could be great for bakers as well, all the baking tools. Um, and I really just, I was winging it, you know, I, um, I took, I took some tools, I laid them down, I estimated the measurements, um, and it came out great. So <laughs> happy with that. Very fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I have those tongs. In fact, that's what I use to dye my shirt with. I guess I could use it on a grill, but that would be totally out. <laughs> yeah. They're great. Um, you just hold them in your little thingy here. Oh, how cute. How cute. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what are we thinking we want to see first? Well, let's ask the brother fans. So what's your favorite? Which one would you actually, I would actually use all of these. I love that you have the same logo on each one. Why don't yeah. you give us some tips for embroidering number one on those placemats because they turned out so nice. And you had your logo on there. What did what stabilizer did you use, or how did you get that quilting? I'm sure you did it with the embroidery and not just sewing. <laughs> well, I'm not I, sure. I actually did the quilting uh, sewing. I did you yeah. really? I did. Yeah. Um, maybe not the most efficient way, but I find it so therapeutic to just stitch the nice even lines. So I did the sewing with that. Um, but let's take a look. Yeah, so with, with this nice woven cotton, I just used a tearaway stabilizer um, and that worked pretty well. See the stitches, oh. stitches are nice and clean. Um, and then I used my favorite frame on the six needle, which is the flash magnetic frame, the five by seven. So you're able to, I'll take that out now. So this is the five by seven magnetic frame and pop off your magnets. And then the top just lifts up like this, which makes it really easy 
to hoop things, right? Because this was embroidered. I did this circle first and then I moved it around and did the cold drink and then I moved it and did the hot plate. Um, so marked the cotton when it was laying on the flat to the center for the plate, marked it for the condiment circle and the cold drink circle. And then as I had it in the machine, I would just kind of, this would probably be easier if I put the hoop in the machine. <laughs> I'll do that in a second. But you're able to just slide it over. Again, this would work better if it was in the machine. Slide it around, reposition it, put the magnets back on. Um, so it made the process really easy to just keep scooching it over and embroidering the next piece of the placemat. Moving it around, moving it around. You've got everyone's making comments now about what's their favorite. So uh, Kelly says, I'll make sure I saw this right. Kelly says her, everyone's saying thank you, by the way. They definitely need these sewing, sewing notions. Kelly says, uh, everything on the internet's true. So now you are the master griller. <laughs> Well, and she said her favorite is the apron and the towel. And there's actually a couple questions here about your towel when you're ready. Um, yeah. Judy, Judy Quilt says, hey, what do you put on the back to make your towel look great? Because that's always the thing. You put some great embroidery and then the back's like average. Mm -hmm. I, I do half and half. Sometimes I don't care what the back looks like because nobody's going to see it if it's hanging. But I'd love to know what you're doing. I also use the tearaway. It looks pretty great. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. This one, I guess, not usually when it's a really high pile, I'll put a uh, water soluble on the top, but I felt like this was, this is a hundred percent cotton, this towel. So I use the tear away on the back and it's a nice flat surface on the top, not too much pile going on. So yeah, it, it came out really good. That's what I did. I don't know if it's the right thing, but it came out right. So <laughs> It looks nice. It absolutely looks nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, that hoop that you just had, Amanda said, so do you just, do you put stabilizer in there with it or just the fabric? So, and that's yeah. always, you know, when you get these new hoops, sometimes you can get away with very limited stabilizer, but for this, I would think not. Yeah. For this one, I do fill the area with stabilizer. Um, and to make it easier for myself, sometimes I'll use these little clips, these clips come with the hat frame for the six needle machine. So what I like to do a lot of the times is I put the stabilizer down and then I clip it right onto the side. That way I could hoop my fabric and the stabilizer won't move at all. And I'm not using any adhesives that are going to be sticky on the frame. And then once everything is in place, I get my magnets down. I can kind of take the clips off, even though they won't interfere with, um, with the embroidery because obviously the embroidery area is right here um so you could leave them on but that's that's my my tip for that that's great so lois wants to know when you did those placemats uh did you actually take the placemats and have extra fabric and did the embroidery or did you cut the placemats and kind of maneuver it in your hoop yeah that's a great question um i cut the placemats first uh what i kind of did was i just looked up the general size of a placemat, you know, the general measurements um, online. And I went with that kind of measurement. I left a half inch all around for seam allowance. So I took my yardage. I used three yards of fabric to make everything that I just showed you. So I laid my yardage out. I measured and marked um, the size of the placemat, the size of the tool wrap, kind of came up with all those measurements on paper first and then cut them all out. So the placemat was, so this this was cut out already. And then I marked it off um, where I wanted the embroidery to end up and then hooped it. So it was this size when I was embroidering it. Okay, great. That's always the question because sometimes when we're sewing from scratch, you can just grab a piece of paper, or grab a piece of fabric and start embroidering. So. That's yeah. always a good one to ask. Yes. I, I pre-cut everything for, for these. Uh, really, the reason I did that is because I like to use the least amount of fabric as possible. So I planned out everything I wanted to make, 
and I figured out exactly how much yardage I needed before I went to the store. So that was the real reason why I did it that way. <laughs> hey, that works. And three yeah. yards, like all of that is not bad at all. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, if you're making a set of placemats for the whole family, obviously you'll need a little bit more, but um, always good to measure first before getting, getting your fabric because then there's less leftovers. <laughs> awesome. Everyone's saying, I love, so cute, love the apron. So you <laughs> you mentioned that you made that, um, your logo on there in yeah. PE design? Yep. Yeah, so I just um, honestly went <laughs> straight on without a template, just kind of plotted my points out. Um, and yeah, I, I referenced a photo and it could be good to kind of bring a photo in and trace over if you need a little extra help with shaping. Um, but yeah, I just, I just went for it. <laughs> and it's one color, so it's just one shape, nice and easy. And then you can transfer that design over to your machine wirelessly using design database transfer, which I love to do. Um, and then it's in your machine. And then I was able to, from there, add my initials, the frame, and the grill master text all on screen. That's great. Yeah. So should I show you guys how I did that? Get a little we closer. We would love to see that. Let me switch my camera. She go to sleep on me? There you go. <laughs> Another cool thing, um, I don't know if you can tell so much on the camera right now, but I actually made the background of my embroidery area the same teal as my fabric. So I was able to go into settings. And right here you have embroidery background color. So you can go and select, um, and you can see I have this green selected. So the standard one is white. But if you're working with a fabric, um, say you choose red for your apron. I do find it really helpful to have that color right on your embroidery area on screen because then what you can do is grab your design. I'm going into my machine memory. I'll just grab this one because it's already completed. And I can set it. And, oh, it doesn't pretty. So you can see it here. The blue on the red looks pretty bad. You can't see uh, that thread so much. And so now you can go into your color palette and you can start changing things to a better, a better thread color. There we go. So super helpful. So now I have a really good idea of what the thread is gonna look like on the fabric and I can ensure that my project will come out looking great. So that's another fun little tip, little tool that I like to use on the six heels. You know, Sarah, uh, lately we've been seeing a lot of the 10 needle or the luminaire. Uh, we don't, we haven't seen a lot of the six needle on here and this machine is amazing. So I love that you're showing the screen so everybody can kind of see this. There are so many things that this machine can do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I use this machine almost every day. It's, <laughs> it's really fun, really easy to use. Um, all right. So I'm going to go back to home. And I can give a little tour, I guess, um, so we can just get more familiar with it. So this is the home screen. Again, this is my embroidery area. And right now I have my magnetic frame driver loaded in. So the machine is previewing those magnetic frames for me right up there because it knows that um, that's the driver that I have loaded. And then down here, I have all my embroidery um, categories. So you can go in and then there's more subcategories tons of designs on here to play with. And it works a lot like an iPhone or uh, like a touchscreen phone or a tablet. So you can kind of scroll top to select. It'll preview everything for you. So it's super intuitive because we're all used to touchscreens by now. 
That's one of my favorite designs. It's a sandwich. <laughs> All right, so then you have your frames in here. So this is where I grabbed my frame for the little uh, logo that I made. So we'll go back and look at that. But you have all of your different shapes here. And each shape has 14 different frames available. You got your buttonholes in here. You have buttonhole decorations. You have a monogram font. This one is especially cool. So you can go in to this monogram alphabet and you're able to choose your left letter, your center letter, and your right letter to make a perfect monogram in like three seconds that took me. <laughs> so wow. yeah, so that's, that's a really cool function as well. And then even better, they have specific monogram frames for you to use that will fit that exactly out. And then you have all of your fonts. And I have a small business. Um, I definitely use these fonts in my small business. And I can pretty much always find what my client wants just already in the machine. There's so many cool options here. There's 40 different fonts. And then lots of you know floral alphabets. This one is really cool where you can take an initial and then there's a space in the middle there for you to kind of add a name. So I like that one a lot too. Oh, I love that font. That's one of the ones, I, I don't remember who had a project with that, but they did it on a towel. And uh -huh. that font where they had the big letter and then they put their name in there, it looked really cool. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. It's really beautiful, very clean. Uh, definitely cool for personalization. Yeah. So tons to play with right off the bat. And again, you don't need digitizing software. You can create designs right here on the machine with everything you have. So here's my grill tools that I have um, just saved in my machine memory from when I transferred it over wirelessly. So I'm going to set it. And it just adds it right to my embroidery area. And right away, we have a lot of information about the size of the design um, and the positioning of it, the color, how many threads there are. So right now, there's one, one thread color. And then we have all of our editing stuff right here. So we can size it. And you can actually size it by thread density, which is really amazing. When you size it just proportionally, you can go up or down 20%, but with the thread density, so I'll show you. We could get about that big. With the thread density change, we could get way bigger, and the machine is actually calculating and changing the thread so that it adapts to the larger size. So that's a really great feature as well. And then we have all of our rotating, and you can be extremely exact with your rotating, which I love because I can be a bit of a perfectionist sometimes. So you can rotate by 0.1 degree, which is, again, very precise, uh, but I love that. So 90 degrees, 10 degrees, 1 degree, or 0.1 degree. And if you mirror your design, you can change those thread colors, like I was showing you before for a second. So you have your whole thread palette here, or um, color palette rather. Um, you can duplicate things, which is really fun. A lot of other machines, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go back to add, go back to your machine memory, select the design again to add a second one. So having that duplicate button right there in the editing screen is very, very helpful. Saves you a lot of button pressing. <laughs> and you can just select with your finger. You see a red box will come up around whatever you're currently editing. And delete those. 
those if you'd like. Then you have some really cool, um, these are, this is an applique feature where you can create an applique around your existing design. That was really awesome as well. And this one's probably my favorite. This is the <laughs> automatic stippling. So it adds stippling based on the size of the frame that you're using right around the design that you have loaded in. So hopefully you guys can, can see that a bit, but that always looks really cool. You can also do echo stitching. I love the echo stitching. In fact, uh, it's really funny you just showed that because it's been a while since I've used that and I was working on this little tooth fairy pillow and that mm -hmm. echo stitching is so easy. It just makes the project look so nice with a touch of a button. Now, uh, now that I would not sit there and sew around, but you could. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it looks really nice. And um, this would also be another great way to do the, the hot pad that I showed instead of sitting, if you don't want to sit at your machine and do the rows of stitching, you could just pop this right on there and um, it would look really good. Um, and you can change the distance and the spacing and do lots of editing in there. So that's a really fun function. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is add my little frame in. So you can go to add and it brings you back to the home screen. And then I'm going to go back to my frame pattern category. Stick with my circle. And the circle that I used was this one because I thought it kind of looked like a sun. And we're talking about really in the summer. So I'm going to set that right there. And then I'll go into size and I'm going to make it as big as I can. But I do want it to fit in my five by seven magnetic frame. So I'm going to make sure I'm staying within those parameters. And again, you can see your dimensions right here on the screen. So making sure I'm within the five inches there. And then you have your positioning arrows here. So I can go ahead and move it around. This little dot is to center it. I usually like to keep my designs right in the center because then I know everything is aligned properly. At any time, you can also, instead of trying to select with your finger, if maybe you're having trouble with that, you can use these little arrows to just move through all of the different elements on your, in your embroidery area. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and position these. And you can see they're a little bit big right now. Also, I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. You can see what's 150%, which again, very helpful if you're trying to do a very precise placement. So yeah, these are definitely a little bit big, so I'm just gonna size them down. And I'm, I love that I'm able to move as I'm sizing. Um, that's, that's very cool as well. Because again, on, on a lot of machines, you would have to go in and you would size, and then you'd have to go back to the menu and go to the move, um, the move tool. But here, it's just always there for you to play around. Hey, Sarah. Anne just has a quick question for you, and you already answered this, but just in case for those that jumped in a little bit late, the silverware design, did, was that actually in PE design or did you create it there? I created it myself. Yeah. Okay. There you go, Ann. It was in PE design. Now, by the way, uh, yeah. for those who just finished doing a whole bunch of scan and cut and embroidery, and if you have the scan and cut, you could actually scan this in, turn it into, uh, you could use um, vinyl, we could turn it into embroidery. There's a lot of other options there too if you don't have PE design. Just an idea for you. Totally, yeah. I um, I was itching to use the scan and cut for a lot of these projects for sure, but I know, um, that's all I was thinking as I'm cutting out these little tooth fairy things. I was like, that would be perfect on the scan and cut to turn those into applique. All these possibilities, right? <laughs> one way, one item, and many, many, many ways to get it accomplished with brother. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I'm going to add some text now. So I'll go back to add. Go into my text category. 
And I used two different texts on my apron design. I did one that was more open for my initials, and then I believe I used this one for Girl Master. So when you select a font, you have your alphabet come up, and you have different tabs. So this is my, my capital letter tab. This is my lowercase letter. You have numbers, symbols, and then special characters. I'm going to start here, and as you type, your text is going to come up right here on a preview for you. And then you notice all these buttons kind of came to life down here once I got my first letter going. So right here is the sizing of the text, large, medium, small. I can see how big it is on my embroidery area already, and I know that I'm going to need this text to be small to be able to fit under my rolling tools there. So I just tap that twice and it toggles down to a size small. You also have this really great array option. And we can talk more about this if we want to preview how I did the placemat because for curving the letters, the way I did around this uh, circle frame here, you use this array tool. So let me get some more letters in there and then we'll really be able to see how it works. So you're able to, so my, my text is just straight across right now. You're able to pop it into a little curve, a little smile. And then you can go ahead and you can make the curve bigger, you can make it wider, tighter, all that good stuff. So again, with this placemat, I chose my frame, then I added the text and just kept adjusting the wideness um, of the curve until it fit nicely around the frame there. You know, I'm so glad you showed that, Sarah, because so many people think that to be able to do cool letters like that, you have to have software. Mm -hmm. And depending on your machine, even even quite I, many of you don't have the six needle, but check on your machine because a lot of times you can curve those letters or make them a different array, which is kind of cool. Very cool. And you don't have to use software for it if you don't have that, you know? It's just a little extra thing, easy to do. I like the way that you had it match your circle too. Yes, <laughs> very satisfying. Um, yeah, I know that the uh, Luminaire, the 1700E, they all have the array function as well, which is really awesome. You can um, do diagonal text as well, which looks really cool. Okay, so I'm going back to black. And then I'm going to put master on a second line so I can just hit my enter button and I'm now typing on a second line of text. All right. uh, some other things down here, you can go into letter spacing. And I've actually never played with these, but let's play with this right now. It looks like you can kind of like bumping my letters up. Have you played with this one, Angela? A little bit, but not, not as much as you're showing there. That's very cool. Yeah, that's a cool one. I know that these two will space your letters apart or move them closer together. And then right here, you're able to press, this is like the font key down here. So when you're in your keyboard, your alphabet, you can press the font key and you can go ahead and preview all these different fonts. And you can, right now it's changing one letter at a time. So it's on my R. But I can show you guys another way to try out some different fonts once we set this text. What it does is it groups together both of those lines of text. But if I go ahead and ungroup it and just select one line, all of these new editing functions come up just for the text. So if I go into my thread color palette, you'll see that the word um, master is one color block. 
But if I wanted to make my letters all different colors in that word, I can just activate the multicolor function. Then I go back into my red palette and now every letter in that word is separate. And I can go ahead and assign all different colors to each letter. And if you don't like it, you can just turn it back off and it's back to being one, one color. And then if you go into the text editing tool, again, we're back, we're back at our keyboard. Sorry, having trouble with that word today. <laughs> back at our keyboard. And again, we can go and change. Now it's changing the whole word at once to a different font. So that's a really cool way to preview lots of different fonts really quickly. And that's kind of cool. I like the two, the two different fonts together. Real master and some flair. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that looks good. Right? So I'm, I'm gonna keep that. So that's a you know, that's a perfect example of why I love all these little tools because you can create things that you didn't even think to create and it just kind of happens while you're playing around on here. Well, the other thing, Sarah, when you have all that text on there, to be able to quickly go through fonts, because a lot of times it looks one way on the screen, and then when you see it like big, how you want it on your project, it might not look the same, or the letters might be too thin or something like that. It's so easy to quickly scroll through there and change that. I love that feature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's great. So I'm going to move these down now, and then that will give us a better idea of if we need to, if we can keep the font the size that it's at, if we want to make it bigger. I'm going to position it right at the bottom of the frame here. I'm going to select the grill. Right. And then what I keep pressing here is the preview button. I love to use this button because it blows the design up for you. You can see it really clearly without any lines or boxes or any distractions. So it kind of looks most like what it will look like when it stitches out um, in real life. You can also preview it inside of your frame. So the machine generates kind of a little image of what your frame is going to look like. And it shows you the, the proportions that the design is going to stitch out as uh, in the in the frame. So Again, another really good preview of what it's going to look like in real life. Okay, and then I'm going to go on. Oh, sorry. What was that? That looks great. And uh, Kelly, I see Kelly in the comments. Great idea, too. Where she was just mentioning that whatever brother machine you have, go to their YouTube page, search for your machine, and there's a ton of tutorials. Not only our live shows where we're answering questions, but there's also videos that just show you step by step. Does that machine have videos on it like the Luminaire does when you're trying to um, search for certain things? Yes. You have a button right here. You have your operation guide. You have tons of videos, how-tos. So we have all these different categories. So it's showing you the thread palette that I was just talking about. Um, it's showing you color sorting here. There you go. Yeah, I love those videos right there. And yes, Judy, I saw you mentioned that and a few other people did too. The, the screen looks very similar to the Luminaires, what Susie says. Judy says she has the still air and almost everything you've shown so far, besides having a multi-needle, uh, they can do on that machine, adding the letters and everything. Yes, you can. Yes. Okay, so last thing to add would be my initials. So I'm gonna go in, press add, select my font. I use this font for my initials and they are S. So I set it in um, this really large size for now, but again, I can always go back into my text editing function and size it right down. I can size it down proportionally by width, by height, uh, and then I can also toggle between large, medium, and small. So I'm going to keep it at medium. And then again, I have my move arrows right here for me, which I love. And I moved it right up. And we are in position. 
So the last thing I want to do is change the red colors, but I will show you guys that color sort function because I absolutely love it. So right now I have um, I have one blue element and all black elements. And if so, I added the blue element first, and then it's going to stitch out all the black elements. But let's say I added my black frame first and then added the blue and then added three more black elements. The machine is going to do the black frame, then it's going to switch over to blue, and then it'll switch back to all the black. But if you wanted to eliminate that one unnecessary uh, switch over, you can go to end edit and you can activate your color sort function. So the machine in that case would then sort all the blacks together and keep that blue separate. That way it would just stitch out all the black elements at once and then the blue element and there would be less switching back and forth. So on a multi-needle machine, obviously that's not your biggest concern because the machine will just switch colors on its own for you because it knows what color is in each needle. But this function again is on a lot of other brother machines and when you're working with a single needle and you actually have to switch out the thread yourself every time, that function is extremely, extremely helpful. Right, I'm going to go back to edit and I'm going to change all those colors to sky blue. So I can see right here this element and you can select each element on the left here. I can see that this is sky blue. So I'm going to select the next one and make it sky blue and so on. Oops. There we go. Preview it again for you. That's looking pretty good. And then when you're ready, you can go to end edit. And the laser positioning is a really great tool as well. It helps you just align everything. So like I said before, for this placemat, I did kind of a little cross mark right here where I wanted it to start and then drew a line straight down. With my laser positioning, I was able to position the design to start right where my cross mark was with my marker. And then it traces down this way, and I was able to make sure that the design was staying straight on my straight line. So, I mean, I, I couldn't live without that function, I think. It keeps all my projects looking nice and aligned and straight. You can go ahead and do a few more editing things here. So you can rotate, but what it's going to do is rotate the entire design. Right now, you're not... Um, you're not editing anything, editing the entire design. And the same with the move. If you want to move the design around, it's going to move the whole thing for you. All right. So we we'll move to our embroidery screen. Here is where the machine is going to give us a lot more information about the stitch out. So it's telling you that it's going to take us 15 minutes. It's going to be about 6,000 stitches. And there are five different threads. Really there's one color, but there's five different elements. So that's why it's saying five there. And then again, you can scroll through the, uh, the different elements here. If you have a really big design, usually you'll have to scroll down. Um, I always like to double check. So right here, the number two means that it is going to pull thread from the second and right on the front of your machine, you can see all the needles are numbered. So it's very easy to quickly check here, uh, needle number two, check your machine needle number two, make sure you have the correct thread in there. And again, it's, it's coming up on the side here. Now, what else? So let's say you have sky blue actually already threaded in needle number six. You can go ahead and use this magic wand tool 
and you can assign that number six needle to every element if need be. So that's a quick and easy way to adjust. Instead of taking the thread out, changing it to needle number two, you can just tell the machine, actually, I want you to use needle number six, and it'll do that for you. And then this is a really cool function as well. This is the, um, what is the exact name of it? It's, it's the stop button. There's a better name for it. I'm blanking on it right now. I apologize. But what you can do is if you want the machine to kind of stop before it goes on to another element, this is really useful um, for applique designs when you're stitching out on here. You can add this, this stop in here. And you can see a little red hand, or hopefully you can see that. Yeah, a little red hand popped up right here. So I'm um, on my first element. There's a tiny little red arrow here that's telling me that this is the part that the machine is working on. And then when you add the stop, it's going to add it right after whatever element the machine is currently working on. So what it will do now is it's going to stitch out my grilling tools and then it's going to stop before it moves on to the next portion of the design. So again, if, when you're doing applique, this is most useful for that because it, you'll, it'll stitch out your placement line and then you'll tell it to stop. You'll put your fabric down, then it'll stitch out the next line. You'll tell it to stop. You can do your trim and so on and so on. And then the last, uh, or actually there's two more things I'll show you. So this is the plus and minus stitches. So if a stitch happens to break or you know some, you just want to go over uh, a stitch out area again, you're able to advance by one stitch, 10 stitches, 100 stitches, or even 1,000 stitches. So it, uh, honestly, thread breaks don't happen for me on this machine. Um, but say it does happen and your machine kind of skipped over the whole S in SV um, and you were out of the room and you come back and you realize it, you will be able to navigate through that design. You can see that my, my little progress bar is moving along here as I advance through the stitches. And also there's a little green crosshair up here. It might be hard for you guys to see, but that is showing me exactly where the needle would be positioned um, at that point in the design. You can also pay attention to your, your stitch count here. And you can see it's just going up by 100 stitches every time I press that button. So again, I don't really need to use that on here because this machine is so great. I, I haven't had thread break yet. Um, but if you do happen to need that, it is there for you. And then this is where you can adjust your stitch speed. So this machine can stitch up to 8,000 stitches per minute. So it is crazy fast. And you can get a ton of stuff done in very little time. Um, so as I adjusted that, you can actually see that the time estimate changed. So it's only going to take 13 minutes if we stitch out at 1,000 stitches per minute. If you want to lower it down, that time estimate goes up. This is also useful. I know Angela and I, you've talked about, uh, we've talked about specialty threads before, like metallic. Um, if you happen to be using metallic thread or a cotton thread for a certain element in your design, it's always good to be able to lower that stitch speed really, really simply, really easily right here on the screen for you. Uh, that way, again, you'll avoid thread breaks because you'll be stitching at a better speed for that particular thread. I agree. I, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, reading a few of the comments. The metallic thread, and a lot of people I have heard say that you can't use that in a multi-needle machine, and it's not true at all. <laughs> exactly. You just need to adjust that stitch speed, and you should be good to go. Definitely. Yes. Hey, Kelly, I did not know this. Kelly said she actually hooked up an HDMI from the port 
On your computer. Oh, yes, on your computer you can. I was thinking, Kelly, I was thinking from the machine. I was like, I've never done that. I didn't know we had an HDMI port. I misread that, Kelly. But yes, that's a good idea to watch it from your computer. <laughs> Do we have any other questions at this time? Just a couple questions on the measurements that you had it, for what you had as far as like how wide was, was each piece. Somebody wanted to write that down. Okay. You want me to go through everything? Uh, you can do it now, or if you want to give put it in later, I can have I can put a link to your website too. Um, yeah, that that works. Let me see if I think I might have my little. Susie, this is not the ten needle machine. She's on the six needle machine. Looks very similar though. Here are my plans. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it looks like like a rocket, a amazing rocket description. <laughs> so um, right here at the bottom is where I just kind of mapped out all of my dimensions. So the tool wrap, awesome. yeah, so the tool wrap, for example, is um, 24 inches long by 18 inches high. And then that pocket, um, because, oops, I dropped it. <laughs> Let me grab this tool around and show you guys. So this pocket is a third piece of fabric. So it's also 24 inches long. Um, and then I made it about, I think it's about eight inches high or so. But really, it's really good to lay your tools right down and see how tall you need it to be right because you don't want your tools sticking out of the tool wrap and you also right. don't want them kind of falling all the way down into the pocket because then it's not easy to take it out so um definitely i i would recommend just laying your tools down and, and getting a rough estimate of how big you want to make that um and i'm, I'm not here are the other dimensions, but I really um, I did a quick a quick internet search and found just rough dimensions and ran with it. So I definitely recommend um, doing your own research. It's all the info you need is out there, um, very accessible, and yeah, because there are definitely yeah you can make up your own too. I mean, like if you're gonna put placemats just measure how big you want or if you have one at home just to copy i i think my favorite on there though i love that tool wrap well i actually like them all the apron's great but i really like that quilted one that you could put hot things on because i i, I always am like rushing to grab a towel or something because i never have something for the hot items right and this is another perfect example like um if you grill with a certain platter take the platter put it down on your fabric and trace around it. And there's the exact size that you'll need for your hot pad. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. All right, oh, hey, Karina. <laughs> yes, this is the top that I dyed. Uh, what is the, let me just check. The loop. Oh yeah, actually I was thinking about the loop. That machine you have has really cool buttonholes. That'd be a great time to use that too. Yeah. No, you're right. I probably should have done that. Um, no, just always, I'm just always thinking of extra ways, like extra ways that you can. So yeah, everyone was asking. Yeah. So this loop, um, I bought a, let's see, it's a seven, eight, seven eighths inch grow grain ribbon to match my uh, fabric. And I got a pretty good match, right? Like that looks good. Um, yeah. And I just fold it in half to make this loop and did a little zigzag stitch uh, to kind of close it. I felt like it strengthened it more to have two layers there with a stitch. And the purpose of the loop is just, um, I think most grills have them. I know that my dad's grill definitely has it. On the side, there's hooks for like the, the brush and really large spatulas and big tools like that. So my idea was that you could take that little loop, you can just hook it on the side of your grill while you're grilling or when you're getting ready to grill. And then all your tools are just rolled up right there, ready to go for you. 
Very nice. I love that it's all color coordinated too. Yeah. Gorgeous. All right. So I don't see, you know, oh, there was one question about your sixth needle and um, let's see who asked this here. Jean wanted to know, do you have to put a drop of oil in the bobbin before using this machine or when do you oil with your six needle? Yes, uh, it is recommended that you oil it every day that you use it. Um, and I definitely do that because I want to take care of it as best I can, keep it running smoothly for a really long time. So, yes, I can. So you just put a small drop of oil onto the bobbin? Yeah, so there's actually a little button right on the screen. Let me show you guys that screen one more time. Jean, that was a great question. Yeah, very, very important step for sure. So right down here, this is kind of like the thread needle chain button. And right here you have this drop of oil. So I'll show you guys. This is the little oil dropper here. And the machine comes with this. So it's giving me a little warning. It's going to say, I'm going to rotate the bobbin now so you can oil it. So I can say, okay, it rotates it for me. And then it gives me a little diagram of exactly where the oil needs to go. And honestly, very helpful because it's a little bit confusing when you look at it. Um, there's also another diagram right inside the bobbin cover. So you can, it, it really, the machine helps you along every step uh, trying to get everything right. So gives you a good diagram there. You just drop a little bit of oil, press OK, and it goes back into the proper stitching embroidery position. And you close the cover and you're all set. That's awesome. Yeah. So very easy, but very, very important. That was a great question. That was a great question. I think a lot of, we don't even think about that sometimes, but with the six needle, 10 needle, I saw somebody talking about the persona. Definitely. Yeah. Sarah, this was just a great project. Everyone's saying how cute, a lot of fun ideas. Uh, the last question, because our hour is up, but the tea towel that you had, did you purchase or did you make it? Because a lot of people are saying they have a hard time finding cute tea towels. I actually have a cute one here that um, <laughs> that the brother brand ambassador Joanne sent me. I don't know if you all remember her doing this cute one. I love it. But um, so did you make your towel or did you purchase it and then embellish? I purchased mine. Yeah. <laughs> I end up, I've got a whole stack. I have every color and I keep putting our boat name on these. I think I got to do that grill master though. That's, that's definitely on my list. <laughs> um, for, you know, if you find a set of tea towels and I happen to find one that matched, you know, everything so perfectly. Um, if you find a pack of them, a lot of times it's more cost effective than buying, buying the fabric and doing it yourself. So that's, Kind of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, great idea. I have actually, if you see down below scrolling, there is Brother's website. Don't forget Free Design of the Month is up. I know the website was down. I think it's back up. If it's not, it will be soon. I've got my website and I've got Sarah's website. If you have questions, you can always see Sarah. She's on Instagram. Send her a private message. And uh, this has been a great tutorial. So even if you're watching the replay, if you have questions, ask away. Brother Social Team's always great about answering those. And Sarah, I love your projects. Great projects and great topic for this time of year. Yes. Happy National Grill Month, everyone. It sounds good. Well, everyone, it is Thursday this week, and we have another live show next Tuesday. So in the meantime... Happy sewing. Don't forget to use hashtag look above. Brother sews, brother scan and cut. They love to see what you're working on. Until next time, happy sewing.